You know, if there's one question I get asked more than any other, more even than what color is a mirror, that question would have to be, Mark, how do you take a photograph of nothing? Today, we're going to try and answer that question. What is nothing? Is there such a thing as nothing? And if there is such a thing as nothing, then, well, that's something, right? It makes my brain hurt. Look, I could get very spiritual on you, talk a little bit about how emptiness is the doorway between the material and the ethereal world, that only through emptiness can you experience the reality of fullness. But that all sounds a little bit like bullshit, doesn't it? There's one thing for sure though, Australia has a whole lot of emptiness. It's everywhere. Now, before you tell me that this isn't empty, I do know that. I've seen the David Attenborough series about the termites that thrive in the Antarctic tundra. But what I'm talking about is the visible emptiness. I also know that I tend to see the world through a European lens. I'm looking for those little Welsh cottages in Snowdonia with the huge peaks rising behind them. We don't find that in Australia. It is an old land. Our Aboriginal custodians will tell us this place isn't empty. This is a culture that has six words for six seasons, where for me it's hot and bloody hot. So I know that it's my fault. I know that I'm the problem with emptiness. But I do have one trick up my sleeve, an ability to find individual points of interest in the nothing and to enjoy the beauty of minimalism. Just got to pause here before you get your hopes up for austere and tasteful photographs of a lonely cloud floating over vale or hill or even a solitary tree breaking the serene landscape. You might just want to notice that the vegetation is pretty scrubby and messy. The light was casting shadows and I picked Australia Day to shoot this video, which is perhaps the busiest this place gets. If you're looking for true nothingness, you'll have to wait a bit and endure some pictures first of me skirting the edges of the beach in Caravan Park and taking photographs of actual things. And one thing you can say about Australians is that we do make our mark on the landscape. And perhaps that is as good a celebration of Australia on Australia Day as anything else, capturing those things that just seem uniquely Australian.
So, camera du jour, the Nikon F55 or N55, depending upon what part of the world you come from. This was really one of the last gasps of the film era where Nikon was really just knocking out a cheap commercial and uh, arguably very low quality um, SLR at the end of the film era. It was designed for anyone who couldn't afford an SLR to be able to get into it and really just at that point when digital was starting to take off. These can be found cheaply and that's uh, for a number of reasons that I'll go into later. But at the same time, isn't a camera just a box that lets light through your amazing lens? Unfortunately, this is not an amazing lens. This is the Nikon 35 to 70 millimeter f3.3 to f4.5. Sure, they obviously wanted an f2.8 but couldn't quite get there, but they knew they could do better than f3.5, but not a great lens, at least reputably not. I haven't really tried it out yet, so let's see how it goes. Let's not forget, we are in paradise. I mean, we really are. And just like that, I managed to capture a picture of a dude in an Australian shirt. This isn't something that I normally do. Normally, I lack the courage to approach strangers, um, but it was kind of fun. You seem nice. So what can I say? Half an hour in and, uh, ooh. 28 shots down and a remarkable lack of emptiness. Anyone would think that Australia was full of vibrancy, life and colour. Actually it is, but I do have an idea. Tomorrow I might go somewhere a little bit more empty. So yeah, a beautiful coastal town, renowned for its turquoise waters and great fishing on the most busy tourist day of the year. Perhaps not the best timing to capture nothing. Actually, it's amazing how hard it is to find nothing when you're looking for it. Perhaps the problem is that I'm just familiar with Lehman to the extent that I'm blind to what's around me. All the variegations and corrugations of a small town nestled on the coast can be lost in the expanse of sand, scrub and sky until you actually take a camera and place it in front of your eye and start to look at it. I certainly did my best. For an empty landscape, I had a nothing camera. The Nikon N55 is not a workhorse tool. In fact, this is my third one, having picked up several over the years for pretty much the price of a cup of coffee that have lasted just about as long. Two of them ended up suffering from electronic issues relating to autofocus, although this one has actually lasted a few years now. As of 2023, you can still pick one up for really less than $100, that's Australian dollars, and if you're patient, you might even be able to get one with a lens. 
So why do I have a soft spot for this camera? Well, it's super light. This whole setup weighs just over 600 grams and even lighter with the 28 to 80 millimeter kit lens that it came with. And it's not like I have to worry about someone mugging me or even noticing me. It's so inobtrusive. This lens though has a fairly ignominious reputation. The optical formula is based on the previous manual version manufactured at a time when zoom lenses just weren't that good. You get a limited range, moderate aperture and mediocre optics. Look, it's not that sharp, but it's sharp enough. The bokeh isn't beautiful, but you can still separate the background and it distorts throughout the zoom range, particularly at the wide end and it suffers chromatic aberration at wide apertures too, but you can fix that stuff later. And let's be honest, it flares more than in a JJ Abrams Star Trek movie, but just don't point it at the sun. All right. Look, it's probably also about the cheapest Nikon lens you can buy. And to be fair, the build quality of the autofocus version is really not too bad. Um, it's one of the biggest limitations of the N or F55 is that it won't meter with manual lenses at all and it won't focus with AFS lenses that don't have that um, screw drive that they actually have the focus motor built in. But for these older lenses where it's actually controlled by the camera, they work great. In fact, in good light, the short focus throw makes this particular lens quite fast to lock onto your subject. And yeah, It's loud, certainly not discreet at all, but to yeah, be honest, you're not a professional wedding photographer taking photos at the ceremony, nor are you worried about scaring away that curious but skittish aardvark approaching your hide in the African savannah. Remember, this video is about photographing nothing and just maybe a nothing camera is the best tool for that. So it's January the 27th, the day after Australia Day. Yesterday, not too successful, looking for nothing, found an awful lot of something. Let's see if we can find nothing today. So today we have a similar setup, but we have a change of film. We have some Ilford FP4 loaded into my Nikon N55. It's a great day for black and white. So we're at Kalimba Beach and I hate to disappoint you, but it's not empty.
a little bit more something in the nothing. Old mattress springs. All right, what we're trying to do here is capture some of the mattress springs in the foreground. Okay, first one done. So we have certainly found nothing, but what kind of nothing have we found? We've actually found emptiness and desolation through salination. Not perhaps the most joyful celebration of emptiness, but certainly a very contemporary one. And as I said, it's about finding something in the nothing. And this looks like something. If you didn't know, my Instagram handle is Patterns in Sand. Today, I'm gonna make true on that. what I call emptiness. I think what I'm going to try and do here actually, as weird as this might sound, is a panorama. Let's see if we can capture a panorama of nothing. Alright, 7 50th of a second F11 seems to be the go. So I'll take perhaps, yeah, there's nothing in the sky so I'll probably try and capture some of the dirt tracks in the foreground. And we'll do about three shots or four shots. One, two, three. 